This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know why I'm rejoicing today? Why is that? Because we have one of the couples from our anthology. They were gonna, they're going to share their love story with us. They're going to talk to us about their love story and marriage and ministry. We have the amazing Servant Hearts, the Allens. They're going to share their story with us, so stay tuned. Coming up next on this episode of the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee. Welcome to the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee, where amazing things happen. Our goal is to help build, prepare, and restore healthy relationships. Our primary focus is on the marriage relationship. However, the topics are applicable to the relationships that we value most. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow. Well, we are excited to be talking to Prashan and Tyron. Alan, this is exciting because we were on her, had an opportunity to be on her podcast a couple weeks ago. She's a, she's she's like a vet. Yeah, so uh, we we listened to it and it was awesome. It was an awesome interview, and we really really appreciate you guys. Guys, thank you and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for mm-hmm. having us. We, we're excited, you know, talking offline a little bit about Miss Prashan and her interviews it was so fast and so fluid and i was like man see that's what i'm trying to get to because it sounded so smooth and so quick but yeah it was great it was great you know it's always awesome just like what renee kind of mentioned in the intro about you know the book anthology that you guys are joining in us with it's awesome when you can learn something from other people doing the same thing so that was great and i appreciate that well, Ty, we want you to hear. We want to hear from you guys. We want you to share your love story. Let the, our audience know how you guys met, um, who pursued who, all the good and stuff, all the, you good know, stuff. all the good stuff, all those details that people might not know. <laughs> okay, okay. You want me to start, honey? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we met was we met in the military. Uh, we both were serving in the United States Army, and we met. Uh, at the Pentagon. We were both stationed at Fort Myer, Virginia, and we met at the Pentagon. And we were we met through my cousin, Jason, and we were just um, we were just friends. I wasn't interested in anybody at the time. And um, actually, um, because my family, I'm from Chicago and my husband's from Atlanta, but my family, we're very affectionate. Like when we see each other, we go, oh, hey, right. and we hug or we kiss each other in the cheek. So when my, every time I saw my cousin, Jason, my, uh, friend at the time, well, I didn't know Tyron at the time. He was with uh, Jason. And so he thought I was Jason's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and so one day he said, um, oh, your girlfriend is cute. He said, girlfriend, man, that's my cousin. <laughs> and so, you know, it kind of went from there. We became friends. Uh, my cousin, Jason, he ETS out of the United States Army and me and Tyron, we just became uh, friends. We were friends uh, for a long time before we started dating. And so uh, he actually pursued me because I believed strictly in staying hidden as the Bible um you know, had spoken about um, that single people care for the things of the Lord, how they may please the Lord. And I didn't believe and my conviction was not to pursue a man, you know, but to pursue, as Matthew 633 said, uh, pursue, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all my heart's desires. All these other things will be added unto me. So, but even at that, I wasn't really thinking about, oh, I want a boyfriend or I want a fiance. I was just really, you know, I was so caught up in being single and having my relationship with God that when he told me how he felt, it, you know, it was it was a beautiful thing because I did like him. You know, I did start liking him, but I would never say anything. <laughs> so, Ty, did you really think that was his cousin or you were just trying to check it out? No, no, I uh, I actually um, I did say that I said to Jason, hey, you know, your cousin is really cute or whatnot, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, so um, I thought that she was actually his girlfriend. Excuse me. I thought she was his girlfriend. And what was amazing was that they were so because uh, she would always, you know, hug him. And, you know, when when uh, whenever she would come around and I was like, oh, man, and, you know, he has a girlfriend. I didn't know being a young man, we were only interested in playing video games. You know, it was like uh, me, Jason and a, a guy named Elgin. And we would just sit around and play video games at the time. So. And, you know, all the time, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all the time, huh? she would pop up, you know, and be like, hey, let's go down to the uh, the BX or something. And he would be like, oh, no, I'm not going to the BX. Now we're playing, you know, football or whatever. 
you know, in a video game and, uh, or NBA 2K, you know, we were playing NBA 2K or something. One day, I think I said to Jason, I said, hey, man, you may want to make a little bit more time for your girlfriend, man. You may treat her a little bit better, you know, because, you know, you so, uh, she's, upset. <laughs> she's going to be a little upset that you're always hanging out with us and never have any time for her. And, uh, and that's when he was like, oh, no, that's my cousin. I was like, oh, OK, well, open mouth, insert foot. I'll be quiet. And- <laughs> so so but, when, when you found out that was your cousin, did you start thinking like, hmm, this may be an opportunity? <laughs> I did not. I did not. It wasn't. It wasn't for a while. And I, I will be honest with you. Uh, we we hung out uh, just a group of Christian friends, you know, living yeah. in the barracks. Yeah. We hung out in a group, um, uh, maybe five or six of us at certain at certain points, and we would all hang out together, um, kind of like um, uh, the safety the safety net, if you yes. want to call it accountability. Yes, it was like an accountability thing. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. I was a new Christian, meaning that I had only been saved for a couple of months. So my thing, my my thing was, OK, I can't hang out with my old friends because we're in Arlington, Virginia. And, you know, they my old friends would, would go and club in D.C. So that was out for me. And I was like, I'm coming out of that lifestyle. So I'm learning to live the Christian lifestyle. And uh, I had to have Christian friends to help coach me, you know, okay, we do this. We don't do that. Okay. You know, you have no business going over there, you know, so forth, so on. Uh, But, you know, as a young babe, it was helping, you know, it was just having a friend, like a a structure, you know, a a safety structure. So Prashant, at that time, did you know, I know you guys said you were kind of in like a small group, kind of just hanging out together as friends. But even though you, you, you mentioned that you weren't going to pursue a guy. When did the transition happen to where you guys started looking at each other a little bit differently? <laughs> um, for me, um, it was really, it was right before my cousin PCS. I just said, hmm, he's kind of cute. <laughs> it's like you the light I- clicked on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never, you know, had seen, looked at him like that before. You know, I was like, okay, he's an attractive guy, you know, but like I said, I was really focused on my career, you know, being a soldier, school, whatever else I was into at that time. And um, I think when my cousin left and we started hanging out uh, a lot more, first it was like he said with the group and then uh, a lot of our friends started PCSing and then it was just me and him at the end. And we, you know, we both were worked um at the Pentagon but we didn't see each other until like we got off work and then he started coming by saying hey what you doing you want to hang out you want to go to the PX you want to go to the movies you know and for me I was like hmm he's kind of cute so so you started playing video games is what you're telling us (laughs) (laughs) no I didn't like the video games I was like what is this is these games are boring you know right so I wanted to go shopping and you know go out to dinner and stuff like that, eat all the time, you know, so, and just do fun stuff. We really like going to the movies and stuff. So, but um, that's for me, that's when it started. So, so how did you pop the question? What was that like? Share that part of your story. Wow. So uh, the, the, the thing that was difficult about, uh, cause we dated a um, ooh, probably more than four and a half years. And uh, what was difficult in this is in one of those years for Sean, Pashan went to Korea. Yes. And and I think that's for me when I had the, okay, I'm miserable without her moment, you know. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. So, <laughs> you so, going to miss uh, me when I'm gone, when I'm gone. <laughs> so uh, I, I really uh, kind of went through and it was like, you know, I won't say I was depressed, but it was like, oh my God, I, I really miss her. And it's like, I wanted to talk Aww. to her and, um, you know, you try to, you know, be cool with it. You like, I want to talk to you, but it's like, you know, you don't want to sound too excited, you know? So, uh, but in my mind, I was, you know, it's like, I, I, I was telling myself I should have married her before she left. Aww. And, um, and, uh, you know, it's like, okay, you're <laughs> asking yourself the question, okay, am I ready? Do I, you know, you know, you think, oh, do I have enough money? Do I have a, a nice car? Do I have a nice house? Do I have a nice house? You know, all these this stuff that really doesn't matter. You know, you're like, okay, what do you do? But you know, I was making up my mind that when she came back, that uh, I was going to propose to her. You know, without telling her, and you know, if if the opportunity came, and sure enough, you know, a hard year had a hard year had passed, and she called and she was like, "Can you pick me up from the airport?" And I was like, <laughs> "Ding ding 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 ding." Yes, yes. Opportunity. Yes. Absolutely. 
and and I think that's really where opportunity came. And I remember when it's like I kind of sat down with her and I was like, okay, you know, this is um, where I'm at. This is, you know, how I feel. Wow, I'm proposing. (laughs) (laughs) Say, I'm doing this. And it was weird, though, because uh, I was like, uh, I'm proposing. Like, kind of like an out-of-body experience, huh? Like, why am I I'm not saying these words? And it's like, and then it was the, um, she She was like, oh, my God. You know, she got excited. And then she was like, I need you to call my mother. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Go to and before I asked him to do that, I answered him. I told him yes. But he said, well, I was going to propose to you when I picked you up. Uh, from the airport, I was going to propose to you right there in the airport. And I said, really? He said, but I wanted to make sure you wasn't getting off the plane with another Joe. Another <laughs> right. I said, oh, okay, you were scared. I had somebody else. Because I was only coming back for a few months to go to school. And then I was PCS into Fort Bragg. And then, you know, because uh, we, we came in touch a little bit over the year that I was uh, in Korea, but I had made up my mind. I said, okay, I'm, you know, this is it. If he doesn't propose, because that's enough dating, I'm moving on, right. you know, and <laughs> I'm going to Fort Bragg. I had a plan. I'm getting my apartment and my cat and I'm good. You know, right. <laughs> I gotta move on to my career. And um, uh, once he picked me up from the airport, um, we he took me to drop off some stuff and then he he proposed we were we were actually in his apartment and he got on one knee and he proposed and I was I wasn't expecting it uh you know I wanted it to happen but I wasn't expecting it wow. um, and uh I was very excited and happy and I say yes I said but can you you know can you call my mother because my mom uh was a single parent and so I just thought you know yeah can you honor her and just let her know because she, you know, she knew about Tyron. Right. And Tyron, you said something before that I want to kind of back up a little bit. You said that you were miserable during that time that you guys had that separation. And then you started having this feelings of understanding that, hey, maybe I'm missing something here with this woman who has me kind of puppy dog sick. <laughs> or, but what I wanted to ask was during that time, was it that you were consciously thinking about taking your relationship to the next step? Or what were some of the things that you were going through as an individual while you guys were separated? Because a lot of couples who may have a distance in relationship may not realize that that's a time for personal growth as well. And to take a look at how do I develop as an individual? So was there things that you were doing on your own to kind of prepare to become a husband? So I would say the the best marriage is God's plan. So the best place to quote unquote prepare to become a husband, believe it or not, is in the church. So you need to to be uh you need to hear the scripture and be groomed and have faith built in you to believe that you can be a husband. But the the greatest of all husbands is God who is married to the backslider. And if you understand the relationship between God the Father and the backslider, uh then you understand in you know what what your marriage relationship is going to uh, kind of blossom out of and uh, is kind of modeled after, if you want to call it that. So uh, I, you know, as far as growing to be a husband, you you think you're ready. And, you know, and that's the only thing I thought I was ready. You know, I had a decent job. I had a nice car. I had a, a small apartment. I thought I was ready. You know, well, I think Sean was at the apartment for two or three days before I had to ask her, can I have some of my apartment back, please? <laughs> so, you know, but my 800 square foot apartment just wasn't enough anymore, you know. So, you know, and you you think you're ready, you know. But once you take those vows and you start to say it's after you take the vows, after the party, after you've had the cake, you know, and that's when the weight of being a husband kicks in. Because right. it's weight to being a husband, uh, you know, responsibility and um, like... Um, You know, as soon as we got married, uh, she went on this crazy tirade about, okay, you need your ID card and you need, and you know, to be on these on my orders and we got to get you over here and you got to do this and you got to do that. I was like, well, why are we doing all this? And she said, because we're about the PCS. And I was like, what's that? (laughs) Wow. You know, one of the things I I was thinking the other day, I was just standing and I was in the kitchen. I was just thinking, because, you know, we're a military family as well. And, you know, you hear the saying, absence makes the heart grow fond or absence makes the heart wander. And I think with all this stuff that's going on with COVID, I think that one of the advantages that we have as military members is that we know what it's like to be apart. A PCS is a, a 
temporary duty station separation or deployment. And so I think that for us, we know what it's like to be apart. And so it makes you appreciate. And I love what you said. And and there, when you're apart, it really makes you realize this is somebody I can't live with. Because I remember when Gil went away and got the, you know, joined the military and we had said that we we're going to wait the four years. And I remember him calling me and it's like, I just can't do this. And I was like, I can't do it either. And we made the same way. We made the decision at 21. This is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. And so for those people who think you have to have all these things or have everything in order, I think you just have to have a commitment. And we were not saved. We just had a commitment to one another. And so how would you say, your military life has prepared you for this present corona environment? Um, For us, it teaches you to fall back on your basic principles uh, of survival, you know, and um, take care and cherish the things that matter most. Because now, you know, it's imperative that that we see and we're teaching our children this um, daily, you know, um, it's important that we really live the the word of God, you know, because when when is it going to happen? And it's going to come a time for the United States, unfortunately, and I'm not wishing this sooner, but in other countries, they're persecuted for going to church. They're persecuted for reading their Bibles and so forth uh, in saying the name of Jesus. And so during the COVID-19, it, t- it teaches us to uh, come together more as a family, come together more as a couple, uh, to pray more together, to prepare and to have fun and to enjoy each other. You know, uh, being in the military, it teaches you organization, mm-hmm. you know, um, and that's that's the main thing. Uh, my whole principle and philosophy has changed. It's like less is more, yeah. you know. Less is more. We don't we don't need all this stuff. We need God. We need each other. Yeah, you want some uh, very nice things. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But less is more. You know, um, it teaches like preparation, you know, to be organized, to be prepared. And so you I remember all of the training, you know, uh, we used to say um, we do more in the morning before nine o'clock before most people can get out of bed. That's the truth. Know? And that's the truth. <laughs> and so we we keep that. And, and I've always, uh, before I got out of the military, um, my NCOs would say, hey, don't do a brain dump. Use all your military training mm-hmm. for the rest of your life because you're going to need it. And it's very true. You know, it's very true. Uh, to the point, even our kids, my son, he says, I want to go in the army like you and dad. And we were like, no, uh, we don't see that. We don't see that's where the Lord would have you sh- uh, have us to shoot you, you know, as an arrow, you know, we, we see something else. So, but if the Lord says, so that's nothing wrong with going in the military, but let's see what the Lord has to say. So being in the military really has uh, prepared us um, during this COVID-19 uh, season. And it shows you what, what you, what you're strong in and the areas you need to work on. And, and I think that's a great point that you just mentioned about the areas that you need to work on. We call them growth areas, mm-hmm. you know, and, and things that you are already strengthened in. And, and, and Ty, and one of the things I want to ask you is, can you talk to the development process that happens as you decided, you know, you were decided, I think I want to marry Prashan, but I don't have enough prepared. You know, you mentioned already that, you know, it's a spiritual journey. Can you talk to that a little bit more about the things that a young man could do other than have the money and have the career and other things that are kind of important to developing that you're going to join together with this woman that you're going to need to know some of the skills that are required, like compromise is one, for example. So could you talk to something like that as far as when you were going through that stage of transitioning to becoming that husband? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're, you're right. Compromise. Compromise is uh, huge. Uh, in growth and development, becoming a husband, the, the thing, uh, you know, you're, you're learning to compromise. You have to learn not to be selfish. Mm-hmm. Hello. Wow. Yes. That, yeah. Say that again. <laughs> let's say, let's all say that in stereo. Can't you have be, to learn selfish. Not to be selfish. Selfish. <laughs> so, yes. uh, and it's difficult because, you know, I, I, you know, I have my relationship with God, which is great. And the reason being is that, you know, I'm not just out doing stuff, but I'm praying about what I'm doing. And I'm saying, hey, God, uh, help me be a better husband. Hey, God, help me with my relationship with my wife. Help me, you know, make sure I'm treating her right. You know, and I I, I had a closet moment 
And God was responded like, you know, treat her like your best friend. And I was like, I'd only been married a couple of weeks. I was like, I could do that. I could treat her like my best friend. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's beautiful. You know, I can do that. Because you're, you're questioning how do you, when you start, you say, okay, we have so little, but how do you get to having so much? And it's like, you have to start somewhere. So yeah. treat her like your best friend. So I did. And the, the thing about coming to this person, you know, talking to this person, considering their, their need over your need, not being selfish, you know, uh, not being harsh. You don't, if it's something I don't want to do, I'm like, okay, I really don't want to do this. So I'm going to have you do it. No, I don't want to do this. Okay. I got to suck it up because it's just, you know, my responsibility, you know, I say will help a young man go through this. But, you know, I think one of the biggest benefits because we did not have, we didn't have any children. Um, uh, and, and thank God, you know, uh, cause I think coming in with children puts more pressure on, on a younger husband. Yeah. Cause you have to learn to be a husband. If you haven't felt the pressure of being a husband, you're not prepared for the pressure of being a father yet. Yeah. And that's an excellent and point. Father at the same time. So it helped me because I didn't have kids. Sean didn't have kids. And it really helped me to, to be able to grasp just being a husband before we got to, okay, I need to be a husband, I need to be the dad, you know, and I need to have all these titles. And I think that pressure really uh, hurts a lot of people today because they, they never get used to the pressure of one of the re- responsibilities. But I love what you said, because even if you get married and you've been married, because we were like, again, we got married at 21, we had nothing, we didn't have kids. But I look at for us, because we work with couples, and one of the things we realize is that not being selfish It like it fixes so many problems that couples come into the relationship with. So even if you have been married before, even if you do have children, if you can just take what he said about don't be selfish, that can be the bomb of Gilead in your relationship by not being selfish. And when we come back after this episode, we're enjoying this conversation we're with Ty and Prashant Allen. We're going to be talking about what happens after you say I do. Some of the things that you can work on as a couple. Gil and Renee Beaver's over 30 year relationship is the genesis for the Rich Relationship Podcast, which is designed to empower individuals with the tools, principles and the community needed to unpack ourselves, our past and our preconceived notions associated with relationships. Let's get empty and grow together so that our lives will be filled with love and healthy, rich relationships. Now let's go into our show. So we're talking to the Allens and it's been an awesome conversation and I'm really enjoying, you know, just hearing their story. It's always fun to hear people's love story, how they met and how they grow together. And I think the military, it makes us a very unique group of people because we meet and we have to connect really fast and get to know each other. Absolutely. And so um, I I want you guys to talk about what happened after you said I do. And just if you were talking to your younger self or someone who is just thinking about getting married, Prashan, share one thing that you would share with a young woman. And then Ty, you share something that you would would like to share with a young man that could kind of, they can put that in their tool belt and help them along their journey. Okay, sure, sure. The one thing I will say to my younger self or someone who is uh, preparing for marriage is uh, communication is key. Communication, you have to be willing to uh, not only you've opened your heart and you've received this person in your heart, that you're ready, understand what spending the rest of your life means with someone. So communication is key. It's okay to to tell them um, even after you've said I do, you know, hey, I don't I don't like this. Hey, I like this. Or I need this from you. You know, is there anything else you need from me? And, you know, to enjoy the journey, take take your time. You don't have to try to because every year is going to be different. Every year you're going to grow. Every year uh, is is going to be a different challenge. Maybe, maybe not. You know, so communication is key. Um would uh, having unity and peace in your marriage, you know, and don't keep secrets, don't lie, don't hide things from one another to a successful marriage and be honest. Yeah. So Ty, did you have to have something you wanted to add to that one? What was your, one of your one things or two things? Or the one thing I would uh, say for a young man, uh, if you're uh, thinking about getting married, uh, even if you're not thinking about getting married, I believe a lot of young men have the, the failure to commit uh, and when I say that, they think that it's better for me to be single out here playing the field and, you know, sowing my real oats, as you call it. But <laughs> I would always I would always tell them 
that that's not true. It's better for you to not waste time and find your one true love and commit. Uh, you have to commit because you you get a completely different life. You I didn't live really until I was married. Aww. And that's um, that's the life I live now. But the life I lived as a single person, I I didn't I couldn't have even imagine how good I would have it now. So I would say stop playing the field, find the one and commit. You know, you 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 receive a completely different life. That is so beautiful. You know, for me, when I listen to you guys' story, you know, one of the you guys' topic in the book is marriage ministry. Could you guys kind of speak to what is that like? You know, because like for Gil and I, we weren't saved. I always say I don't ever talk about being single and saved because I was never single and saved. I got married and then I got saved. And so could you kind of talk to some of the practices and principles that you guys live by that has helped your single and saved life? Because you guys seem to have made that commitment as single saved people. So what would be some of the, you know, a practice and a, a principle that you guys have worked through in your relationship to help being married and dealing with ministry? Oh, wow. Uh, when you're, <laughs> when you're married and you're going through ministry, you Especially when you're a young married couple, you have a lot of zeal. You know, you want to, oh, I want to, I want to work in the ministry. I want to do my part. And that's great because the Bible does say, put your hands to the plow and don't look back, you know, and, and find something to keep your hands busy, find something to uh, serve in, find a ministry to serve in, but never ever sacrifice your marriage, your children, yourself or your family on the altar of ministry yes. ever. God is a God of order. And if you are serving your pastor more than you serving your wife or your husband, you are out of order. Mm -hmm. If you are serving the ministry more than you are serving your children, because your family is your first ministry. Yes. And we have a lot of people that are suffering in church because they don't know how to say no. No is an, is a very anointed word and you have to have boundaries and priorities. And so, um, if you find that you're feeling pressured to uh, serve all the time and you, you don't have enough time for yourself, your children or your spouse, it's time to sit down with your spouse and have that, that heart to heart conversation. You know, like, what are we, what are we doing? Because there has to be a balance. You know, and sometimes, you know, so it, I'm not saying that you won't ever have to stay late a day or two serving things in ministry. But if you're at the church five times a week, you yes. know, when you, you know, when you get off work and, you know, you can't enjoy your kids, you have no time for yourself. Remember, you're not you're not going to have any time to give your spouse or your children. You're going to be exhausted spiritually, physically, mentally. And then you're going to start serving uh Cause you have, you, you don't, you haven't had any time with God. Right. So right. you don't, you're going to be serving on an empty tank on fumes and then transforms into now you're serving out of resentment. Yes. Oh, we gotta go. That's when you hear people say, Oh, I gotta go to the church this Saturday. Oh my God. It's men's ministry again. Mm -hmm. it's, not ministry again. it's because there were no priorities or boundaries ever put in place. And so, and you know what? That's a growth too. You know, once you see that, you got to hit the brakes immediately and you got to be, there it is again, communication. You have to be honest and say, you know what? I can't do this. Right. You know, I'm tired all the time. I just want to spend time with you. I need time to wash my hair, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, practical things. Yes. Practical things, things, or I just want to sit in the house one day and do nothing in my pajamas, eat pancakes and watch movies, and enjoy the kids, right. you know, and my husband or my wife, you know, whatever, right. you know, enjoy my family. And so have, have boundaries, you know, uh, one of the things we remember, um, from serving in ministry, that was a, a, a couple and I will spare their names for privacy reasons. Sure. Um, uh, they turned down, they first, they accepted, uh, becoming elders, and then they turned it down because they said it was too much of a demand and it would take too much away from our family. And I thought to myself, wow, that took a lot of communication on their part together, unity and maturity mm -hmm. to say, no, this is too much for our family at this point. 
thank you for the honor. And they said it. Thank you for the honor of, you know, uh, wanting us to be elders and seeing that in us and wanting to develop us. But our family come first and we cannot uh, give what you're asking for. That's honesty. Yes. So, so Ty, when she learned to be anointed to say no, how did that shift as a husband? How did that shift your relationship because I think that we see it from both sides in ministry. Sometimes it's the woman and sometimes it's the man. So could you speak to the man about how you had to, what was your role in it and how did you keep your family as the priority? Um, th- this is what I will say. This is um, um, what I've learned. And the, the most important, the most important thing is you, 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 not just you and your family, but you know, you as the individual and you have to have your own relationship with God, you have to be able to hear uh, what God is saying. And I, I think a lot of times we are over, uh, we overextend because we had not considered the father. And if we had a, been in prayer and heard the father's voice, he, he would have told you uh, from the start, hey, you you don't have the time to do that. Right. Hey, that's not where we're leading you. That's not where we're directing you. It's critical to hear the father's voice in those roles, in those times, because you don't want to get in an uh place where you should be serving in ministry and you know all of our gifts flow out of love yes they but do you don't love what you're doing all of a sudden and it's like now you're you know you're really uh working out of the flesh and you know there is no mm-hmm. anointing for mm-hmm. for what you're doing uh and that's where you don't want to be um are you grace to be there? and exactly do you have the grace to perform whatever tasking you know it not just are you graced to be a porter or are you graced to be a preacher? Are you graced to be an elder or a deacon or are you graced to be uh, in the parking lot? You know, right. where does your gift shine the most? And, uh, and, and that's the thing, you know, hearing God's voice, I think that is what helped. That's what really helped us to get things back on track because some of the things we were doing were outside uh, of where we should have been. And then, you know, there were points when, you know, and this is the thing I love about being you know, having a spouse because, you know, you, you got your, you got your own little team. And, <laughs> you know, you have your own little team, you know, sometimes when you come to the bench, you know, you know, somebody pull on your shoulder and say, hey, hey, I know you think you're Michael Jordan, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you're not 27 no more. That's you know, you, right. You know, you can't be running around doing this no more. And, you know, I, and we do it to each other as, as a husband and a wife, you know. I'm out there and she's like, hey, you're doing a little bit too much, don't you think? And I was like, oh, OK, OK. And the same thing with her. You know, I, I had to pull her. So I was like, OK, uh, you've had two concerts this month and a, and a workshop. That's, <laughs> That's too right. Much. That's beautiful. <laughs> but you guys have established where you're open to hear that from one another. And that yeah. is a discipline. And that's something you have to develop as well. And so yes. we applaud that. So yes. as we're coming up on the near the end of this episode, this actually flies by when you're having, a, a, you having a good a conversation. conversation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so as we're coming up on the end, why don't you guys, if people want to cook up with you guys or connect to you and find out what you guys are doing, how can they reach out to the Allens? Oh, absolutely. You can uh, go on our Facebook page, uh, Pashon Allen, P-E-S-H-O-N Allen or Tyron Allen. T-Y-R-O-N Allen, and you can inbox us on Facebook, or you can also uh, go on the Women in Ministry on the Move page, and you can uh, tag me there and inbox me, and we would love to hear from you, love to talk to you. That would be great. And some people say that and don't mean it, but when they say it, they really, really mean it. Absolutely. (laughs) Because they have servant's hearts. And and we really, really appreciate you guys investing. We always say invest in your time, you know. And share your lives. Because we know you guys are already busy enough. And just we thank you guys for coming on the show and just sharing a little bit of your story and some of the things that you guys have learned that can help the community, because that's what we all want to really, really do. We really, really thank you guys. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you so much for having us. This has been awesome. We yeah. love you guys. We love your podcast. Well, we, we love, love you guys. And it's so glad to have you on the other side of the mic. For a change. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we really, really appreciate it again. Thank you guys. And guys, just remember, we are stronger together. Let's grow. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your investment in time. Remember to subscribe to the show and hit the notification icon to be notified when new episodes are posted on the podcast platform that you're listening from. Or you can always find us on our website at richrelationshipsus.com or our YouTube channel, Rich Relationships with Bill and May. If you found this podcast helpful or you think it could help someone that you know and care about, 
please pass it along and share it with them. And also, you can always send your questions and comments to richrelationships.us at gmail.com. This is a weekly podcast, and the new episodes are going to be posted on Monday by 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow!